The next aspect that we're going to start looking at here is the psycho-emotional aspects. And my psycho-emotional approach is mainly comes from the four needle five elements. So there's a couple things maybe I should explain to how the four needle five elements are used within the UAT system. So the first idea is that we need to understand with psycho-emotional aspects is, is that there is no such thing, in my opinion, in the way that I'm talking about this, is that there's nothing as a negative emotion. All emotions are responses of the body to either an external and internal event, helping us to understand how to respond better. So every emotion actually has a function behind it. And as we know in Chinese medicine, all functions can be both in an excessive pattern or in a deficient pattern. If it's in excess, it means that that pattern is taking over everything else and it's not in its balanced state. It is the way in which the response is to everything. Or if it's in a deficient state, that response, that function is not being able to be produced. Um, so what's happened, so th that's the basic idea. So we have both the excesses and deficiencies of emotions or the functions of emotions. Now in traditional TCM, the way that we read it in the modern text is we always talk about associating the emotion to the yin element and then talking about when that element or when that emotion is in excess. So the idea that we're doing here is we're moving away from that idea of all the emotions can only be a problem in excess. And we're saying is that we're going to take the emotion that's associated with the yin element and associate it to the element itself. And then we're going to look at the function. And if that function is in deficiency, we're going to tonify the yang. Because we know if something is deficient and emotions are about movement, it means that there isn't enough yang movement for that emotion to present itself. So the idea of tonifying the yang for deficient emotions, and when an emotion has been a long time there and it becomes too heavy, it starts to take over everything and it becomes more yin in nature because the movement is becoming to become a little bit of a stagnation. So what we're going to do is by dispersing the yin aspect of the element, we're going to make movement for that um, uh, emotion and function to start moving again and start interacting with the rest of the body. So this is a little bit of a different idea than most of you probably know unless you've done the courses with me. We're going to be tonifying the yang meridian to help um, emotions express themselves more. And we're going to be dispersing yin meridians to help emotions that are being overbearing on the rest of the system. And we'll go through it again. So that's the first thing to note. Um, yeah, and I'll get to the other parts that are a little bit spe specific to UAT system later on. So let's talk about the first element or the first emotion that I noticed and I've been noticing. And this is kind of strange, but our bodies are, at the moment, we are going through a period of extreme change. Um, we have never been in this situation before. When you go through extreme change, one of our most important elements to help us navigate the space is to have healthy caution, is to be able to say, this is different than what I've seen before. It's not that I need to be afraid, but I need to hold on to caution. I need to say, maybe what I've been doing in the past isn't going to work now because it's not the same. And the only way we can do that is by recognizing caution. So if we talk about the element that's associated with water, which is fear, and fear's function is caution. Beware, something is happening. So what are we going to be doing is we're going to be supplementing the fear's response and saying we need to have more caution. You know, you see a lot of young children, young people, this has been the problem in Switzerland and was elsewhere, is that they were going out and having big parties because they were thinking, oh, they're not going to have any problems with this. They weren't recognizing the general caution that needed to be, to be taken overall. So 
that is the first thing is, is that we're trying to bring up people who are living in some sort of denial or saying, I can deal with this without recognizing that I can deal with this and I need to be cautious. And I need to recognize that this is not the way things have been before. So how do I deal with this? I can use my past experiences and know that they're not always going to be the right, ex right information because this is different. So for people who are having problems with this, we're going to help supplement the bladder meridian. So to supplement the bladder meridian, we're going to use the same logic as we did for the lungs that we saw earlier when we were building up the Wei Qi. Okay, but we're going to be using Yang points because we're working on a Yang meridian. So bladder is part of the water element. Okay, so if it's part of the water element, we're going to look for the tonifying element for water. And the element that can tonify water is metal. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for the metal point in water, which is bladder uh, 67. And we are going to tonify bladder 67. Okay, so this is going to be tonified. And that is going to be linked to the metal point of metal. And we are going to tonify large intestine 1. And these are both going to be on the left side of the body. Okay, so we're going to be tonifying bladder 67 and large intestine 1 on the left side of the body. And then what we're going to do is we're going to reduce the, the controlling aspect. So we're going to reduce the bladder uh, 40, which is the earth point, and earth can control water. So we're going to disperse bladder, six, bladder 40, and that's going to be dispersed with stomach 36 which is the earth point on earth. Now it's very important in the four needle five elements. When we talk about that, we tonify one part and we disperse the other. And people say, why would you want to disperse the meridian that you are um, working on? Well, we're not necessarily dispersing the meridian. We're removing the excess influence of earth that is being imposed on water and we're sending it back to earth. So although we are reducing um, Earth's influence on water and increasing, increasing metals' influence on water, if we reduce Earth's influence on water, this actually helps re-strengthen Earth itself. Okay, And we'll see later when we get to what Earth's relationship to the emotions is. We'll understand why that's important. Because, well, I'll explain a little bit now. Earth's relationship to emotions is about, is about the cognitive ability to digest emotions to digest the information and then respond to it now if the person is um, using all their past experiences and not recognizing danger at the moment what we need to do is we need to bring this excess energy that's being used to subdue and to push down the availability of fear and to bring it back into earth's domain so then earth can actually be more full and be more representation and say, yes, I can accept that there might be some caution that needs to be taken. So this is actually reinforcing earth in a way by reducing its influence on bladder. And once earth can be re, um, becomes whole again and be strong, it will then naturally give its energy to metal. And then the energy that metal is giving to bladder will come back to metal. So you can see there some of the beauty of this five elements of Four Needles approach is, is when we do this, we're actually balancing all three of these um, elements correctly. And when we balance all of these three elements correctly, it ends up balancing all of the five. So that's some of the, uh, the beauty of it and why the emotions work so well is because they're all about movement, right? In the word emotion, we have the word motion. We have the word movement and emotions only work with movement. So here our treatment is going to be on the left side, tonification of bladder 67 and large intestine 1, and on the right side, tonification of bladder 40 and stomach 36. Okay. Um, so that is if somebody, if you're seeing somebody who isn't recognizing danger, isn't um, being 
the healthy form of cautious. I'm not ex I'm not saying that we should all be in fear and caution uh, and paranoid. The, the, it's always this idea if somebody's completely removed from that emotion, then that's some that's a we need to help them balance that out with that response. And that's something I have been seeing is some people who are not recognizing the actual emotions of what is happening or the actual caution. And we're going to see later, there's also the flip side of that, where people are really into fear and then how we can help them move out of that later. So that's how we would um, work on bringing in some emotional uh, intelligence towards how to deal with caution to help the patient better navigate this space and this time that they're going through. Okay, now the next one that I found that was quite interesting and useful for us to talk about now is fire. Now fire's element, the, fire, the element of fire, the um, emotion that is associated with fire is joy. And what is the function that we assign to joy? What is joy's function? And if you think about all the times in your life that you have been the most joyful, they are when you have felt the most connected to, connected to somebody, connected to a group of people, connected to yourself, or connected to a deep or the universe. It's all about connection. That is what, that is the underlying function of joy. It's to tell us how we can deal with our connections. And we are now going through a period when connection is one of the most difficult things with the isolation that we are physically doing. We have been asked to physically isolate, right? Now, I don't like the idea of social distance. I like the idea of physical distance. However, we are going through this period where it's very difficult for us to connect. Um, and at the moment, the only types of connections we have are going to be these virtual connections. So for example, we're here doing a webinar and these can be very useful, but they can't necessarily replace all the human contact that we've had. Um, so one of the things that people are going, now this is more of a preventative thing. I don't think it's, it started a little bit, but as we go further into this idea of isolation, we're going to notice that people are going to be at, um, less comfortable with using so much um, social media because before we were people were in love with social media was this great thing it is this great thing and it was helping us connect at a very superficial level and then we could still see somebody we could still be in contact with some people so we did have a little bit of a deeper level connection with the physical and human contact as that physical and human contact has now been reduced, we're going to notice that the superficial level of, of uh, contact and of connection is not enough. And we're going to, there's going to be a deep-seated uncertainty of how to, I don't feel connected. So how can we now help bring our patients to a place where they can then look and feel connected with themselves, feel connected with the universe, and start to build real connections, real deep connections in the world. And the way we will be doing that in the four needle five element approach is by tonifying the small intestine, is how we bring in this idea of allowing them to connect to important things. Remember the small intestine's function is the idea of separation. So separating what is good, or what is um, deep and useful and important and what is superficial and less important so that is how we that's the function of one of the functions of the small test time we put that into emotions it's about how do i really connect on a deep level so the points that we're going to be using to helping our patients connect are going to be looking at the four needle five element approach so we're going to start by looking at fire so small intestine is the fire the yang meridian on the fire element. So what nourishes fire is wood. So we'll look for the wood point on fire, which is small intestine, and we will tonify small intestine three. And then we will also look for the wood point on wood to help function with that, and we will tonify gallbladder 41 
and both of these are going to be on the left side of the body. And then what we'll do is we'll say, okay, now we also need to reduce the action of the controlling element to give a little bit more space to the um, to fire. So we are going to look for the water point because water controls fire. So we'll have small intestine two, which we will disperse. And we will look for the water point of water, bladder 66, which we will disperse. And we will be doing that on the right side. So our treatment is going to be small intestine three and gallbladder 41. And then we'll be supplement, uh, sorry. Uh, I know, we just went back one, sorry. So be gallbladder three, small intestine 40, uh, small intestine three, gallbladder 41. And that'll be tonification on the left side. And then we'll be dispersing small intestine two and bladder 66 on the right side. And by doing this, we'll be helping our patients find a better balance in relationship to their, uh, their emotional connections to the people and to themselves. So what I'm going to do now after these two is I'm going to take a brief moment, go to the Q&A and see if you have any questions about what I just uh, uh, showed. So let's see, what was the first question? Okay, so, and if you have them, you can start putting them in now. Oh, somebody just had to leave, that's fine, Camilla. That's fine. So if you have any questions about what we've been going through, you can now put them in the Q&A. I'll give you a couple more seconds to see if you have any questions. If no questions come through, either it was very clear or you didn't understand anything. But either way, there's no questions. Okay, it seems like that was okay and everybody sort of grasped what I was talking about. All right, here we go. Is this purely SAAM or based other ideas also this current system? Okay. Um, the two treatments I just showed you there are the treatment itself, the protocol of how you apply is pure SAAM. The application is specific to the UAT system. And we're going to see that I've also changed some of the applications when we get to one or two other parts of it. Um, so you will get some of this information with the SAAM. If you do other SAM courses, some of it is specific to the way that I approach it and the way that we use it in the UAT system. I guess that's the best way to, to answer that. Okay. How do you like to tonify and how do you like to disperse? So the idea of tonification, my personal approach is um, tonification has a couple of steps to it. Insertion of the needle when the patient is breathing out. Uh, you go in very slowly, very gently, and very little manipulation. Tonification, re removal of the needle when the patient is breathing in. You take it out very quickly, and you cover the point after. And dispersion is the exact opposite when it comes to needle techniques. Those, and the other thing is that I sometimes use is the direction of the needle. You go with the meridian for tonification and you go slightly in the opposite direction, pointing the needle in the opposite direction of the meridian into the point for dispersion. Those are the general techniques. If I know that Anthony, you have lots of, you do work with a lot of chi, so you can use your chi intention as to the needle technique that you want to use. And you probably don't need to use the needle technique as much as long as you are using the proper chi intention in the qigong systems that you're using. But every person has different uh, approaches. That's why I'm just saying, whichever ones you want to approach. In my courses, I go a little bit more into detail, but that's how I would answer it here. How fast can you change? Can you see changes in this in emotions using this, or is it more subtle shift? Both. You can see um, depending on the situation. If the person, I would use this. The more acute the situation, the more sudden the change going back will be. The more chronic the situation, the more time it takes to build it up. So if it's the person's response um, is very only a couple of weeks because of what's happening on, happening, they should be able to move out of that very quickly. If this is a long-standing situation that is being brought up by the current situation, then it will take a lot more time for the for the shifts to happen. 
I move the center of my body. Okay, yeah, exactly. You, that's what I was saying, Anthony. You have a chi aspect where you can you can also use um, the practitioner's chi to disperse and tonify. Do you have a specific practical thoughts on how to tonify and disperse using acupuncture so that patients aren't too heavy-handed? I would say that um, for acupressure, I use the rotation. So clockwise would be tonification. Dispersion would be uh, counterclockwise. And then I also use pressure. So I would say with when you're tonifying, you're slightly adding pressure, but not um, going against the body. So you're just slightly adding the pressure as you go deeper to what the body feels comfortable with. Whereas with the dispersion, you're going in deep and then coming up. So the tonification is going in much slower and sort of building up the space and calling the energy to the point, whereas dispersion is going in and punching the energy in the face and telling it to get out of there. So that's how I would do it in the acupressure. How many treatments and how often? That's always the question. At the moment, you're telling your patients this. If you were doing it with acupressure, I would say they can do this every day. Um, I sometimes say twice a day. In the clinic, then it also depends on all your other um, things that are going on. You know, ideally, twice a week, once a week is fine. It all depends on the patient systems, how they respond. I, it's one of the questions that always comes up in all of my seminars is how often do I treat? And I say as often as the patient needs it and as, un -off yeah, as often as the patient needs it. So you can say, listen, this is the treatment. Look at how it's going. We'll make an appointment in a week. But if these changes happen or don't happen, call me in two days and we can set up an appointment sooner. Um, and the number of treatments, it's the same thing, is you, keep, you treat until you both feel that the treatment has gotten better. Some patients can be one treatment. Some can be 10. Some can be 20. Some can be five. Some can be seven. Some will be five, and then you need to take a break and do it again. Um, I'm not one who really t talks about treatment protocols and you have to do it this many times at this pre this um, frequency. It's more about what's best for the patient and how you and how you work. So do you do any scalp acupuncture for emotions? I attended a Harbin study and they did a lot of stimulation of, on needles. Yes, scalp acupuncture does do that. Um, I can use a little bit of scalp acupuncture, but I don't teach it because I'm not prolific in the system. Um, but what I, with this, with these, as long as you're not, um, as I showed you with the lung treatments before, when we're using the four needle five elements, you can always in, um, introduce any of the other parts to it. So that's not a, uh, a problem in this case. So if you want to add scalp acupuncture, you could. Apologies for the question. Why are heart instead of pericardium in the first Wei Qi session? I learned you to only go to the heart in extreme situations. I will answer that question in a little bit. That question will come up in one of the answers um, shortly after. Um, because in the, my UAT system, we don't include the pericardium in the fire element. Um, that's the basic reason. And we'll take a look at why in a couple of moments. I'm going to explain one or two things about that. That's one of the big differences in the UAT system is that pericardium is not in the heart. Okay, so I think that's all the questions. That's good. So the next aspect that we wanted to look at, um, and for this I'm going to actually answer that question just now that was asked about pericardium. And it goes with Sanjiao also. So in the UAT system, we don't associate pericardium and Sanjiao to the fire element. Um, in the UAT system, we look at, well, let's talk about it this way. We can look here that we have, oh, what's going on? There's, yeah, small intestine, it's fine. Okay. So we have five general elements. We have fire, earth, metal, um, water, and wood. And the traditional, the original way that these were created is we had earth here in the middle, 
Okay. And then we had fire above. We had metal here. We had wood here. And we had water here. Okay. So I put a W and an A for water and a W and an O for wood. They're badly written. It's difficult on this computer. So we have our five elements in this setup. Fire, water, earth, and metal. And earth is in the center of all of these elements. So we can see that earth being the center is where all of these elements come out of. Fire gets, it come, all of this happens on earth. All of these elements happen on earth. Earth is the great unifier of all these four elements. Now, if we talk about the originals of yin and yang, we go back to the ideas that the first separation of yin and yang is earth and heaven. So we have this heaven and we have an earth. And the heaven and earth together, or yin and yang together, create the myriad things. So we have heaven and earth, okay? So we have the original yin, Sorry, let me do it again. So we have the original yin, and we also have yang. So we have heaven and earth. And what we do is we put the heaven and earth in the center of the body. Okay? So we've created this new element now called heaven. And heaven, because it interacts with earth on its most basic level, heaven and earth, we incorporate that in the same part as we would the earth element. So within the earth element and the five elements, it's actually, okay, earth is actually heaven and earth together. Okay. And now that we have this new idea of heaven and earth, and we have this new aspect of heaven and earth, what we notice is which element, which meridian system can we put in there? And the answer um, is the pericardium and the sanjiao. And there's many reasons for this. Sanjiao, yuan qi, yuan qi is the function of the uh, heavenly qi in the body. Um, if you want to take a look at some of the hints we can get out of the old books, pericardium seven, the yuan source point where we, it's connected to heaven. The name is roughly translated into the great mound and the great mound is the place where the mandate of heaven was given to the emperor for the emperor to be allowed to, um, function as the emperor. So we has this very strong connection to heaven's influence on the body. So we have a bunch of information to tell us that pericardium does fit and Sanjiao do fit this idea of heaven. Now, why do we put pericardium and heaven with heaven and earth? Well, if we look, we have what, what I call yin and yang elements. So for example, we know that gobla, uh, sorry, wood is a yin element with a yang manifestation and water is a yin element with the yin manifestation. Metal is a yang element with the yin manifestation. And fire is a yang element with a yang manifestation. So the bottom line means it's base, and the top line means it's manifestation. Whereas heaven and earth are just yin and yang without having necessarily a manifestation. So the way that we know, or the way that I show that this is makes sense is, is that if we look at the elements that have a yang base, okay, so the base is yang, so that's going to be fire and metal. These are elements that the meridian systems put in the arms, which is more yang. And if we look at the elements that have a yin base, so um, wood and water, we see that the meridians are placed in the legs. And then we have this idea of earth, which is heaven and earth. And so one of the meridians is placed in the legs, which is the spleen and the stomach. And then the other one, the heaven aspect, would be placed in the arms, heaven and earth. 
And then all of a sudden we start to get proper balance. Okay, we start to get the full proper balance of above, below, yin, yang, etc. So to answer that question, and now we're going to see how we apply that by using um, the pericardium in heaven and sanjiao in heaven. So we're going to move on to the next aspect, which is the idea of how we're going, why we would want to use this, the, the earth in this case for the psycho-emotional aspects. And we create, I drew this, um, this aspect here where we had earth in the center, and then we had fire, we had wood, water, and metal. Okay, and there we'll put earth again. Okay, so we'll start with earth. And we can see that earth is the balancing point, or it's the, it's the middle of where all these elements come together. Okay, so what is happening here is, is that earth's role, or um, the emotion that we associate with earth is overthinking, which is thinking, which is cognition, which is the ability to think about and to rationally understand something. So if we, if that is the center of the four emotions, <coughs> this is how we ground somebody and we call them grounding as part of the earth element because they are grounded. And then they are able to receive the other information from the emotions around them and then, then respond appropriately. Now, for people who are constantly in a reactive approach and they're not allowing Earth to ground them and to absorb and to take in the emotion, digest the emotion, and then respond. So that person is constantly in a reaction, but not in a response. Tonifying the Earth element and the yang aspect of its stomach is going to help that. So here what we're doing is we're helping the person become grounded in response to their environment. And the way we do that is by tonifying the earth. So to tonify the earth, we're going to take the earth element itself and earth is tonified by fire. So we're gonna look for the fire point on earth, which is stomach 41. And we are going to tonify stomach. 41. Then what we will do is we will look for the fire point on fire, which is small intestine five, and we'll tonify small intestine five. And we'll do this on the left side. And then we'll look at what controls earth, which is the stomach, sorry, which is wood. So we'll look for the wood point on earth, which is stomach 43, and we'll disperse. And then we'll look for the wood point of wood, which is gallbladder 41 and we'll disperse, and we'll do this on the right side. So if we have a person who's having difficulty being grounded, and they're um, constantly floating around and just responding, and sorry, just reacting to everything, and not giving time for emotions to um, come out, and they're not able to logically think through situations, if there's one emotion that's overpowering, then we might want to disperse that emotion. But then often after, to help the person become centered and to better adapt to all the other emotions, it's tonifying the earth. So tonifying stomach, tonifying the center, centering the person and grounding the person. So from the four needle five element approach, this is how we actually ground somebody using the four needle five elements. Now, as I was talking about before, Earth has a counterpart, which is heaven. So if Earth is the grounding rational aspect of our interaction with our emotions, heaven, which here you'll notice we have the San Zhao, and in the same place as the Earth before, we've now put the San Zhao points, and I explained earlier why. So if the person, um, there's two parts to being able to digest or to be able to uh, respond. 
the first is being grounded and to be analytical and to be rational. That's the Earth's domain that's being grounded. And then we have the creativity. We have imagination. <coughs> we have been able to think outside the box. So if the patient is, or the person is having difficulty to see the world beyond its small confines, to have imagination and creativity and coming up with new ideas, this is the person is having a problem with their heavenly influence on their body. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to help by tonifying heaven. So how are we going to tonify heaven? Well, we're going to use the same idea that we've been using before. So we're going to look for heaven, which is here in the same aspect of earth. So heaven, earth's aspect. What, what supports heaven and earth is fire, okay? So what are we going to do is we're going to tonify Sanjiao 6, which is the fire point of fire, sorry, the fire point of heaven. And that's going to relate to small intestine five. So we're gonna tonify them on the left side. And then we're going to reduce wood's impact on earth by dispersing wood point on, on the heaven channel. So Sanjiao 3, we're going to disperse. And we're going to disperse gallbladder 41. We're going to be doing this on the right side. So our treatments are going to be small intestine 5, Sanjiao 6. And then we're going to disperse Sanjiao 3 and gallbladder 41. So this is a really good treatment for people who feel like they're stuck. Um, if you know any, if you have any friends who are um, artists and they say I have writer's block, that's this type of thing. But at the moment, a lot of people, um, I, I include this here because it's important that when people need to come back to equilibrium, one of the first things that people forget is their creativity. Um, it's one of the first signs that a person is starting to fall down. So I would say normally we lose our creativity first, then we lose our grounding, and then we start responding to all the other emotions. So if you see somebody, you can uh, intercede quite quickly by just working on the San Jiao in this way. Uh, yeah, okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to do one more and then I'm going to stop for questions because the last one makes is sort of a link between the two of them. So we talked about having this central space where we have earth below and heaven above. Now, what happens if this is where the connection problem is? There's a problem between heaven and earth. So we're going to see how we can tonify both together. And we're going to ground the person, give them rational, ability to in digest and um, cognate and understand their emotions that are coming in and then also help them to have a creative and imaginative response to the information that's coming into them. So let's take a look. We started with tonifying earth. So we saw that we were using small intestine five, small intestine five and stomach 41 for tonification of earth, right? That's this line right here. So small intestine, uh, sorry, stomach 41 and small intestine five. And then for the San Zhao, we had San Zhao five and small intestine, San Zhao six and small intestine five. Okay, so that's this line here. So for tonifying, we had stomach 41 and San Zhao six, and we also had small intestine five on both sides. Then we wanted to disperse, or we want to reduce wood's in, in plaque. So we went, took the wood point out, took the wood point of earth and the wood point of wood. So we had stomach 41 and gallbladder 41. And then we did the same thing in heaven. So we reduced wood by reducing stomach, uh, sorry, San Zhao three, and gallbladder 41. So our tonification for earth was stomach 41 and san, small intestine five, dispersing stomach 43 and gallbladder 41. And then we were to tonify San Zhao, 
with Sanjiao 6 and small intestine 5, and we were dispersing the Sanjiao 3 and gallbladder 41. Well, let's put these two treatments together. So we can say for tonifying stomach, we'll take the point, right? So we'll take the fire point of earth, so stomach 41. And then we'll take the fire point of heaven, Sanjiao 6. And in both cases, they respond to getting their energy from fire. So the fire point of fire is small intestine 5. So we will tonify stomach 41, Sanjiao 6, and small intestine 5 together. And then we'll do the second part. So here we were dispersing stomach 43 to remove wood's impact on earth. And then we're using Sanjiao 3 to remove wood's impact on Sanjiao. And then both of them were um, sending that energy back to gallbladder 41. So we conclude gallbladder 41. So we'll have stomach 43, Sanjiao 3, and gallbladder 41 to disperse. And what we are doing is we are working on this level of heaven and earth. We were giving the person the ability to respond with imagination and to be grounded. And we're creating the, the vertical axis of heaven and earth and reinforcing that access for the person to be able to better navigate the emotional information they're getting. So that's this treatment here. And you have the sick, let me just put a box around it so you can see it. So the full treatment is like here, 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 and here. And those are the six points, right? So if we're tonifying, this is going to be on the left side. And if we're dispersing, this is going to be on the right side. And there you have a six points to really help center the person, both ground and above. Okay, so I know that that's one of the big differences of UAT system, and you just saw it there. If anybody has any questions, now I'm going to go into the Q&A and start to see if there's anything that's come up here. Okay, so in the first step, supporting the immune system, yes, yeah, so I just answered that question. Slide 11. Are there counter inter inter uh, are there counter way counterindications for tonifying heaven and earth? In general, I would say no. Um, no, I can't think of any counterindications. It might not be the most effective treatment. It might not be the best treatment based on the patient. But there's no counterindication saying. Don't do it. Yeah, I think that would be the best way to answer that, Sonia. There are no specific counterindications. Um, unless the person was in mania, I think that might be the one thing. So if the person was in phlegm misting the mind or some sort of shen, strong shen disturbance, you would better off dispersing the shen disturbance first and then tonifying heaven and earth. I wouldn't do it before because it might reinforce the Shen disturbance, which is true for all of those, right? Okay. Are there any other questions about what we what I just explained about heaven and earth? I know it's a big thing. How long tonify and dispersion if acupressure? Um, I tell patients 30 seconds on a point, whether tonification or dispersion. Um, it's up to you to sort of also gauge that based on the patient's ability. I would say tonification is longer and slower, dispersion is quicker and faster. And then you have to sort of um, figure it out for yourself. I often suggest to patients to do a shorter period of time, many times a day, than one long session, especially at the beginning, because their bodies um, respond be often respond better to short sessions at the beginning. Acupuncture is the, is the opposite, right? You want to do longer treatments. Acupressure, I do that. Would I disperse first? I would disperse when I was responding to the question Sonia asked about counterindications to treating heaven and earth, tonifying them, is I would do a uh, dispersion uh, for the Shen, which we're not going to look at in this webinar. 
um, before I did that. But as my, uh, for these points here, I would first tonify, so this would, stomach 41 would probably be my first point, Sanjo 2 would be my second point, and small intestine 3 would be my third point. Um, and then I would do Sanjo 4 as my fourth point, stomach 43 as my fifth point, and gallbladder 41 as my sixth point. The reason for this order is I start with the stomach 41, for the simple reason that's the only point on the foot on the left side. And then I can go both do Sanjiao 6 and small intestine 5 in order. Now, as I'm already on the hand on the other side, I would do Sanjiao 4. And then I would do small stomach 43. So I have both of these points. And then I would do the final point for them to send it back to gallbladder as the last point. So that would be the order of these points. Um, but there are times that you might need to disperse another aspect first and then come into tonify. So this is from Jenny. With four needle technique, I learned to put in the needles to disperse with a hint of tonification and while they are in, do the tonification. I've never approached it that way, um, but sure, why not? I'm, there's no specific way. Like I don't think that, I'm not going, when I say one, two, three, four, five, this is, I don't always do that. That's in the perfect cases. Um, my personal belief is, is that when you put all the points in and they are working together in the way they're supposed to, that's what's, uh, that's what's going to happen. The tonification dispersion techniques are all about adding um, emphasis. It's the same word, but the accent might be on a stronger syllable. So um, if, if the sentence is laying there long enough, all four words are there, the body will understand it. The only thing that we're doing is when we're adding um, needle techniques of tonification dispersion, we're just telling the body, this point, do it. This is what the, we're accentuating the information. So I don't think it's really a big problem there. You mean Sanjiao 3. Did I not say Sanjiao 3 before? Yes, this point is Sanjiao 3. Yeah, so Sanjiao 3 is here. Uh, okay. I think that's what everybody asked. Is that okay for everyone? Okay. Um, we're going a little bit over. It's already been an hour and a half, and this is going quite long. So I'm going to go through the next ones quite quickly. And then if I have questions, I'll come back. So I'll just check if there's any more questions before I go on. No, I think that's OK for everybody. OK. So let me just check. OK. So some people are leaving because it's been going so long. You can get it in the recording. Don't worry. So the last element or last emotion, sorry, here I've included some information on the lotus flower. So what I find is very useful with this treatment is to use the lotus flower. The lotus flower comes from abdominal acupuncture. Um, Dave Shipsy is a wonderful practitioner out of Australia, um, out of Ireland for it. So um, I'll even put that here. Um, a link to his stuff. Um, if you go to his um, website, you can get a whole bunch of information about abdominal acupuncture. So the lotus flower is about, again, as we're treating heaven and earth, we want to incorporate the center. So the this is all about putting needles all around the navel to help the patient become centered. Um, so here's a picture of what it looks like. So they're all about a half soon away from the navel, all going towards the navel. If you've done the I Ching, you'll, understand, you'll see that this replicates the eight bagua. Okay, so your points are pretty much kidney 16 on both sides. You have a red my eight and a half or nine, red my seven and a half or seven. And then you have these points, which would be also around, okay? So this is the uh, lotus flower. It's a wonderful treatment that you can add into 
um, helping that grounding treatment of heaven and earth. And then the last emotion that people will have problems with is this is a period where we need to be able to let go. And the metal uh, element is related to sadness. And sadness, the function of sadness is to let go, is to say that this is no longer something I'm going to hold on to. Um, so the idea of letting go or opening up the hand and letting something leave. Um, it's the same thing with our physical body. We need to be able to let go of all the accumulated stuff in our body for it to get better. That is the function of the large intestine, is to let go. So it's the same with the emotions that large intestine helps people let go who don't realize that they have the ability or the need to let go. So um, often somebody who isn't, you know, there's a lot of things that we have to let go of throughout this period. People who are struggling with letting go, they're struggling with in the relationship to large intestine. You know, struggling to let go, you're emotionally constipated. So <clears throat> how do we let go? Well, we tonify the large intestine. So tonification of the large intestine is going to be on the left side. We're going to tonify large intestine 11, which is the earth point of metal. And we're going to tonify stomach 36, which is the earth point of earth. And we're going to put these on the left side. And then on the right side, we're going to look for the fire point of metal because fire controls metal. So we're going to disperse large intestine five. And then we're going to look at the fire point of fire, so small intestine five. We're going to disperse here and disperse here. And this is all on the right side. So we're going to be tonifying stomach 36 and large intestine 11 on the left. And we're going to be dispersing large intestine five and stomach five, small intestine five on the right. And this will help the patient really let go and start that process of letting go. This is not a patient who is stuck in continual sadness. This is a person who's having problem acknowledging that it's okay to let go of something. And that's a bit of a different uh, approach. So there you have the last points on how we're going to treat letting go of sadness. The next emotional um, aspect, and now we're going to go into the excesses, when somebody is living completely in that emotion. So two things that we should say is, yes, we're going to disperse yin meridians. And if we disperse a yin meridian, we need to follow up very quickly with the patient, one or two days after, to then see and start rebuilding the body. This is just about getting that first impulse of movement in the body, and then we need to help rebuild, reconstruct, um, tonify. So um, if I do do one of these treatments, um, this will probably be at the end, right? When we're coming out of this period and people have been stuck in these emotions and we want to help them move away, um, move out of that stuckness, we'll treat this and then we'll treat them one or two days later and see how we can then tonify their body for them to better navigate. So it's very important that we can tonify yin meridians, but we also have to be very careful that we are um, tonify, sorry, we can disperse yin meridians, but we also have to be careful that we tonify very quickly after to not allow the depletion to continue. So um, this is a projection as we haven't gone through this period yet, but I'm associating this period on a collective basis to what I see in the clinic on a personal basis. And this is going to be a collective trauma where we are not, where there's a lot of fear about how are we going to survive. We are in a survival mode. And survival mode is about perceiving caution. It's about this idea of knowing that we have to be cautious all the time. Now, when that caution or that period starts to subside, our body is still responding to it. So um, after people have gone over through a long bout of uh, disease and then they've gone into remission, for example, for cancer survivors, one of the first things we like to do is to help them relieve that, okay, I can relax. And so that is, we need to help let go of the caution and to go back to a moment where caution is not the best response at the moment. 
So to do that, the um, meridian that's most associated with excess caution or excess fear is the water and the kidney meridian. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be dispersing the kidney. And yes, we can disperse the kidney meridian. We're not dispersing the actual element itself. And as we saw before, in the way that the four needle five elements work, even by dispersing something or tonifying it, it's always going to come back to help it after. So the dispersion of the kidney, of the water, water, and we're looking to look for the wood point on kidney, and the wood point is kidney one. So we're going to disperse kidney one, and we're going to disperse liver one, which is the wood point of liver. So we're going to disperse these on the right side. And then we're going to help bring in the controlling aspect of kidney. So what controls kidney is earth. So we'll be tonifying kidney three and tonifying the earth point of earth, which is spleen three. And this will be on the left side, okay? If you want to think about it this way, what are you doing is you're also tonifying the one source points. So you're helping kidney remember its proper function of some, uh, some fear, some caution, not too much, helping earth the pole in the ground be strong and we're reducing wood's influence. We're sending um, back wood's influence to wood. So the general is no longer making all the decisions and we don't have to see everything as a threat and a caution. So the way we're doing that is we're dispersing kidney one and liver one on the right side and we're tonifying kidney three and spleen three on the left side. So that's one possibility of coming out of this, pos uh, of this scenario that we're in right now is that we're gonna have a lot of fear. We need to sort of help people come out of the fear. We can already do it now. Um, you can do this with massage, um, some of the points, you know, kidney one and liver one are great points for calming the shen also. So when people are in these fearful settings, we can use it. And then the last um, emotional aspect to look at is the anger. People can be very angry. There's going to be lots of change. People don't like change. Change is about having to change, you know, um, wood and anger are about protecting, protecting what I have. If you're telling me what I have has to change, that puts me in danger. That puts me as a threat. I'm going to protect myself. I'm going to push away at that. I'm going to become angry. So anger is a very possible response to this situation. And if we're angry, we need to let go of that anger. And anger is associated with wood. And the yin meridian associated with wood is liver. So we're going to look at how we can reduce the wood aspect or the, the, the anger aspect in the body by reducing wood. So the way that we reduce in the sa'am, I don't know if I really explained it, is, is that the child can give to the, sorry, the parent can give to the child to tonify the child, but the child can also receive from the parent. So by um, sending the energy to the child, the parent knows that that energy is not going to be a problem. Wood can send all its energy to fire and fire can just accept the wood and burn it and it's okay. It's not going to uh, be a problem for the fire. If wood overreaches in any other of the three elements, it's going to have a disbalance. Wood can't overreach on earth. That will do, uh, devoid earth of all its nutrients and it won't, will become arid. Wood can't overreach on metal. It will start to rust the metal and the metal will become um, brittle and break. Wood can't overreach on water because it will stop the natural flow of water. That's what dams are. The only place that wood can give its energy as much as it wants and always be accepted is fire. So to disperse, we look for the fire point or the child point of the element. So here it's going to be the fire point of liver, which is liver two, and the fire point of fire, which can accept that, which is heart eight. And that's going to be in a dispersion, and we're going to do it on the right side. And then if we are dispersing an element, Right, so wood, now that we've gotten rid of its excess energy, we need to remind wood how to be upright and straight, how we need to trim it so it grows the right way it needs to grow. 
And who does that? Well, it's its controlling element, which is metal. So we tonify the controlling relationship. So we can going to tonify the metal point of liver, which is liver four. And we'll tonify the metal point of lung, which is lung eight. So we're going to tonify these two points on the right side. And what we're doing is, is we're bringing in this wood. Anger has this ability to go out like this. So what are we going to do? Well, if you have a bunch of bamboo, the first thing you need to do is you need to cut it down. So you bring in metal to trim it. And then with all that excess wood, you put it in the fire to burn. So we're going to be dispersing the, the fire aspect of wood, and we're going to be trimming and tonifying the metal aspect. Okay, so that's how we can deal with anger. And this is explosive anger. When the, there's, it's very important as practitioners that we recognize that anger is a healthy function in the body, and it protects us, and we've perceived danger, and then we're saying, no, stop. These are my boundaries, right? Um, these are my boundaries. Stay away. This is as far as you can come. That's healthy. What's unhealthy is that if I perceive everything as a threat, and with everything, I strike out. That's unhealthy. And that is when wood is in an excess position situation. So when the person has healthy anger, there's nothing for us to do. We stand back and let the person live their lives. It's when the person has um, excess anger and every response is an angry response, that's when we come in with this dispersion technique of liver. Okay, I'm just going to check quickly. Yeah, okay. We'll just check quickly for any questions there. Just if you have any real uh, quick questions. Thank you, everybody. Just Okay. I'll give one or two minutes just for quick questions on the dispersion of fear or the dispersion of anger. All on the right side. Ah. Uh, no, I was very well said test. Let me change that for you. So here it's not on the right side. So as we're tonifying, it's always on the left side. So here we're using liver four and lung eight on the left side. Sorry, very well chosen chest, yes. So Evelyn, same answer. So we're doing large liver four and lung eight on the left side because it's tonification and we're dispersing liver two and heart eight on the right side. Okay, anything else? Can't hear you. Can, can everybody else hear me? If you can hear me, please raise your hand. Okay, um, so the problem, Kaido, must be a problem with your computer because everybody is saying that I'm still speaking. Um, so um, you can try resetting or going out of the room and coming back in. Maybe that will help uh, fix your, your sound issue. So now we're going to get on to the last aspect of the, what I want to do today.